Hey comic book fans, welcome back to Comic Book Corner and guys you're back for another Spider Slayers comic book countdown. That's right guys. This video may be a little bit early this week just the fact being that I, um, uh, my wife is uh, on vacation so we'll be spending some extra time with the family this week so uh, videos will be to a minimum so I want to get this week's videos uh, out of the way and um, this is it for the week when it comes to videos. I have a couple other videos that you guys can check out on Dark Adventure Inc. Um, that I still have to edit and put on there so they'll be coming up soon as well. So with that being said, let's get started with this week's comic book countdown. All right. This week we had 13 comic books all together in the countdown. A lot of really good ones and a lot of not so good ones and uh, it was hard to distinguish between the bad ones and the good ones so with that being said starting with number 13 we have young avengers issue number two that's right guys young avengers issue number two just did not do it for me uh in the slightest bit whatsoever um i get that this is kind of a um, getting to know the characters type of part story I guess um, but however this particular issue it just it was a miss for me I felt myself lost at times um, again not all the characters were in it there was maybe two out or three out of the characters in it and I was just completely lost and um, it had to do with some one of the characters Teddy's mom was in it and um, and she was like some alien creature and the Avengers were affected by it and then all of a sudden they were in these blank panel like rooms and it was just like and then kid Loki comes out of nowhere and it was just a complete mess um, I just did not enjoy it whatsoever um, I just didn't like it and uh, you know I'm giving it a two out of five stars uh, I might give this one more issue to make a final decision if I'm going to keep on the series or not. So that's that. Number 12 on our list is Red Lantern's issue number 17. Wrath of the First Lantern Part 4. Now, I did an in-depth review, or not in-depth, but a more detailed review on this book on Dark Avenger Inc. And what I said was that basically in this series I don't even know if you really needed to read this to find out what's going on in the Wrath of the First Lantern you got all your stories with the other lanterns going on and this one was just so weak and so dull and I felt that it was just almost of a reach to have Atrocitus involved in this whole story and I did not enjoy it whatsoever some people may be a fan of this type of art maybe the art fits this type of book um, but I did not like this actual story whatsoever. Um, it was just dark and gloomy and just, you know, I felt like I could care less and I was disinterested in it. So, same thing, I'm giving this one a two, probably two and a half out of five stars for Red Lantern issue 17. Next on the countdown, uh, number 11 on the list was Deadpool Illustrated issue number two. Um, I think I am getting tired of uh, Deadpool just killing random people for no apparent reason. Uh, you know, I was excited for it after the first issue, but then after reading this issue, I was like, honestly, what's really the point of this? Um, he's going back in time to destroy all these characters uh, that have to do with, you know, stories like Huck Finn and, and Moby Dick and and uh, Sherlock Holmes and all these other creature or creatures or other characters so maybe that the characters in the present uh, might actually die as well so you hear he goes and he you know kills this guy which maybe will kill Hulk in the future and if he goes and he kills um, what is it? Uh, the Headless Horseman. Maybe it'll kill Green Goblin and uh, who was a Ghost Rider. And I'm like, this is stupid. So I don't think I'm going to be picking up the next issue. 
and I'm giving this a two and a half out of five stars as well. As well, uh, the best things about this series is the covers, and really that's about it. Next, number ten on the countdown is FF issue number four. Um, this story was like more like a filler; it did not really had anything to do with the main story at all. <coughs> Excuse me. It had to do with Jennifer Walters on a particular going on this date. And most of the story was about that. So I can't really hold, you know, me dropping or keeping the series based off of one issue because it's kind of in between right now. But the thing that I like about this story is Michael Allred's uh, distinct art feeling and also uh, Laura Allred who does the uh, artwork, or not the artwork, but the actual colors. And she made Jennifer Walters and... Um, and just the coloring and everything in here made her really look appealing. At times, she knows when to use the right stuff, you know, to make her go out all out and shine as the character. Um, I kind of enjoyed the way she looked. Uh, she was the feature character in this particular book. And Medusa looks really nice as well. Um, here's a main picture here for She-Hulk. And... Um, so, you know, I dug the artwork. I wasn't really into the story. I guess I'm, maybe I'm not a romantic or whatever. Um, and it basically just had to do with uh, Bentley 23 just trying to sabotage the date. So it was an average story. I'll wait for the next one to see if it gets any better. Uh, there was a good thing in here with the AR that you might want to check out or had the Yankee Yancey Street Gang on there, which was pretty funny. But I'm going to give this one a 3 out of 5 stars. Next was Uncanny X-Men, uh, issue number 2. So we had a great first issue uh, for Uncanny X-Men. Just started off balls to the walls, Magneto, uh, you know, spilling the guts, letting them know what the secret was. Uh, you know, working for S.H.I.E.L.D. and everything else. In case you didn't know that already, sorry if I spoiled it. But in this issue, you got this nice looking cover with Emma Frost in here. But really, this issue just was just, oh my god. The whole issue was just so much dialogue about Scott and Emma. How Emma's powers are not working. And how she feels and how Scott feels with Emma. And the kids, the new kids going back to their parents and blah, blah, blah. It could go on and on and on. It was just like, oh my god, I cannot wait until the end of this issue just to go on to the next one. It was like, please, please, please. And at the end, you get a big, uh, big uh, cliffhanger, and it looks like the action will start right back up. But until then, thank god this one's over. Three out of five for Hunt Candy X Men. Next was Avenging Spider-Man, um, issue number 12. I think I'm deciding to just to, you know, hold off and maybe see which Avenging Spider-Man books uh, might be fun to read. This one wasn't half bad, uh, but again, it had to do with the kids of the FF. And Superior Spider-Man was actually not really of an asshole, which he's been lately. Um, he, you know, but he thinks like Bentley 23 which is pretty cool as he wants to be like this super evil villain and things like that which is really nice to see <coughs> and um and you have death heads involved in the issue too uh, trying to take out a specific timeline that happened in this issue really nice to read uh it wasn't a bad story i did however love the artwork in this particular book and the art was done by <coughs> paco mandina and the way he drew the FF, I was like, man, I almost want to see the FF like this all the time. Like, I like the way they were drawn in this issue. Spider-Man looked good in this issue. And this, this, the artwork in itself just gave it an extra grade uh, there as well. Uh, it was an interesting story. Uh, if you like the children of the Fantastic Four, you're going to like it. And at the end was a pretty good cliffhanger. I don't know where they'll carry this story out from, from, uh, from here on out. But it had to do with something with the Sinister Six, and I'll leave it at that. And hopefully they'll continue off in Superior Spider-Man or another Spider-Man title in the future. So I'm going to give this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars. 
Next on the list is we have Uncanny X-Force. All right, so this issue here, we were on Uncanny X-Force issue number two. And on this list, it made it on my, I'm sorry, I lost track. One, seven. This made it into the seven spot. Uh, this wasn't really much of a progression type of story. This whole issue had to deal with our kind of form team of, you know, Psylocke and Puck and Storm. And it basically had to do with them chasing Spiral and this little girl. Pretty much the whole time in this entire issue. And we also got to see Bishop, but in some rare form that we have never seen before. How he got that way, it's yet to be determined. However, the artwork was really, really good. I do like the art. Um... It's done by Ron Garney, and uh, it's just a nice, pretty book to look at. Uh, the characters are drawn, kept colors are done real nice. And, uh, you know, I am interested to see future issues of this uh, particular title. And um, I'm going to give this one as well a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Next, number 6. Yep, number six, Hawkeye. It got really hard for me at this point to to judge where comics were going at this point. Um, these books that are coming up were all really, really good for me. Hawkeye was an excellent book. Um, I love the cover of Hawkeye's new girlfriend, the one that he bought the car from with this gun. Really awesome. Like I said it in my haul video, it kind of looks like a Target commercial. You know, with the Target bullseyes, just take away the gun right here. And it's like, hey, Target, buy this dress. Bullseyes. It's like hypnotizing you, you know. Nevertheless, <laughs> Hawkeye has that distinctive art feel to it um, that kind of draws you. And it fits the story completely. And it always, the colors always go with what's going on in the book. So it deals with Hawkeye's girlfriend's dress. And this whole paneling all here is, fits, you know, is that particular color. It has to do with um, Hawkeye getting this comic collection that has to do with these specific numbers that go to this safe. And his girlfriend wants to unlock this particular safe. He, she kind of cons him into doing this whole thing. Hawkeye is a great read. And, um, you know, I have nothing but good things to say about this book. You have to read it to appreciate it. Don't let the artwork deter you from it. It fits it. I'm not a fan of this art style. But it just fits the book. Go out and buy this book. It is a four and a half out of five stars for me. Next was Avengers Arena, issue number five. Really, the story is developing nicely. Um, they mix it in with some action and some character development on there. This gets the, the, uh, the five spot this week. And uh, this week we get to learn about our characters um what's his name captain britain or kid britain i'm sorry and you get to learn a little bit of how his relationship was with nira which was that little fish chick and it was a good read it was solid and you're getting to see some of the characters now um trying to survive on their own survival of the fittest trying to live on this island survival island Arcade drops this bombshell on our on our um, players that their supplies and medical care and each little individual group has to try to find it and they're on the four corners of the islands and it was really interesting to see and I really like this issue a lot and I'm enjoying Avengers Arena and if you guys have that extra money you know go out and purchase this book it is really an interesting book it's not boring just enough action just enough um, dialogue to keep you interested and and I think you know Hopeless knew that we didn't know all these characters so he's taking his time with the book and getting you invested in these characters to learn a little bit more about them so I'm going to give this one a four and a half out of five stars next number four Guardians of the Galaxy point one <coughs> this was just a an origin of Star Lord. That's basically what this story was about. Artwork was solid. If you've seen the Point One Marvel Now issue, you've seen 
bits and pieces of this book already. But this story had a nice uh, love story on how Star-Lord uh, was conceived and, you know, how he became to what he is today. And it was really interesting to see him as a little boy, which was Peter, and, you know, protecting the playground and, you know, the relationship with his mom and all that cool stuff. It just gets you a little bit excited about our main character that's gearing up for issue number one, which is in two weeks. So if you guys are Nova fans, space fans, all that type of fans, you're going to really enjoy this series, I think. And the artwork was tremendous in it. So I'm going to give this book a four and a half out of five stars as well. Either that or four. I don't remember what I gave it in my review. If you're looking for a little bit more in-depth review, you can check it out on this channel right here. Next. Injustice, Gods Among Us. This takes the number three spot. It wasn't as jaw-dropping as the first issue. Um, it was so interesting that first issue because it had to deal with Superman and it had to do with Lois being pregnant and you're like oh my god and then right away it's like BAM Jimmy Olsen's dead yeah BAM all of a sudden oh my god Dan you got Lois is dead and then in, in this issue then it starts off the same way so a little spoiler right here if you guys haven't seen the digital copies yet or haven't seen this copy right away you got boom Joker he's gone he's no more and it's like Superman has lost it. He has gone off the deep end. And this is what happens to Superman when you piss him off. He becomes crazy. And this is what he can get when he comes unhinged. Just insane. This book is great. Uh, I have nothing but awesome things to say about it. Harley Quinn's in it. You know, old school way. You got Oliver McQueen with the beards in it. Just great stuff. You guys should read this book. Um... It wasn't like as, oh my god, because you kind of are expecting it now in a title like this. So in my review, I think I gave it a 4 out of 5, but still an awesome story. And uh, you guys should be reading this. One of the best titles that DC has to offer right now, even though it is a mini. I wish they'd make this an ongoing, and I hope that they do. Number 2 on the list is Batman Incorporated, issue number 8. I can't make this book the number one book just because we know who dies, and that is obviously Damien. Um, it, it was just, I don't read the series that often, so I didn't know really what the storyline all entailed. I still have to read issues six and seven uh, to understand the whole thing. But it's a very intriguing issue, and it's interesting to see, is Damien truly dead? Is it really Damien to begin with? Who knows? He could have been a clone. You don't know that yet. You just know that Batman was holding him at the end of the issue. And uh, if it wasn't for that scene, would this still be a five-star or you know book? Or would it be the top three book of the week? I don't know. But it was... You know, it pulled the heartstrings. There's a lot of fans of Damien's. And then there, there's a lot of people that don't like Damien. So, but I enjoyed the story as well, and it was a number two book for me, even though I didn't read the story uh, before that. Uh, but it was interesting. <coughs> it was nice to see Nightwing and Damien team up together. That was great stuff until that little battle was short lived. But I'm going to jump on this series now because I loved what happened in this issue. So, guys, check out Batman Inc. if you haven't done so yet. If you're waiting for a copy of this, Two weeks, you'll get a second print. So last but not least, my number one favorite comic of the week. And it's only the second issue that I've ever read. But there's something about this comic that's just really, really good. And I'm yet to figure it out yet. But, and that is The Flash. Issue number 17. I picked this up at issue number 16. And I enjoyed it. I loved it. It was like mid-grade for me because I didn't really know all that was going on. Um, but now that I read another issue, I kind of understand what was going on. Uh, you know, with the Speed Force and Gorilla Grodd trying to take over and everything like that. This issue has phenomenal artwork in it. It just mesmerizes you. It's just... You love it from page to page. It's just the colors, the art, um, 
even the humor, the way <coughs> the Flash is in this actual book. He's he's awesome. I love this. This is so good. Gorilla Grodd's still so stuck on himself. He's like, I'm the one. I'm destined to win. But each panel, the layouts and everything else is just so fantastic on it. And I just love all the characters that are drawn in here. And I can't wait to read more. It makes me want to read more. Sometimes in the middle of a story arc, you're like, I have no idea what's going on. I don't care. But um, this page right here, I love this page with um, the Flash and Iris you know, going on in, in here, and it was so cool, and Gorilla Grodd taking by this mammoth creature, just awesome stuff, and at the end of this book, you're going to be like, holy crap, look who's here, so a little bit of a spoiler, bam, reverse flash, I was like, oh man, that's awesome, I don't know too much about Flash. I haven't read him too much, but I've heard so much great stuff about this series since a new 52 came on, came along, and um, and I finally took everyone's recommendations and I said, you know what, I'm gonna get it, and I'm happy I did because it was just like a refreshing read for me and just a brilliant book to look at, and the overall story was very very good. And I think there's going to be great things to come from this title in the future. So, guys, hopefully you're reading Flash. Um, I think it's great stuff. I don't know too many people who actually are, but the people who are reading it are like, wow, this is really, really good. So, guys, that is it this week for Spider Slayer's comic book countdown. I hope you enjoyed it. You got it right here. The number one book of the week was Flash. And the worst book of the week was Young Avengers. <coughs> so, go out there, buy your comics, rank them in the comments below, tell me what you think of these books, and guys, I'll see you probably in about, I don't know, maybe a week or so, maybe a little bit longer. So guys, until the next comic book review, this is Mike Spider Slayer signing off, and thank you for watching Comic Book Corner. Hope you enjoyed the countdown. Take care, everyone. Bye.